the Jewish Messiah. How did Jews understand this word and what did it mean to them? There are a lot of misunderstandings about this, particularly in Christian circles today, and I think we should uh, go to a really good, reliable, historical introduction to this subject, supplied by Bart D. Ehrman, who's Professor of New Testament Studies. He's produced this excellent work, The New Testament, A Historical Introduction to the Early Christian Writings. If you're serious about the study of the New Testament, you've got to get this book. It's really readable and uh, is published by Oxford University Press. So um, this is what Professor Bart Ehrman tells us about the Jewish Messiah. And there are some surprises in store, I think. The term Messiah comes from a Jewish word that means anointed one, the exact equivalent of the Greek term Christos. Thus, Messiah and Christ mean the same thing. In the Hebrew Bible, the term is applied to the Jewish king, who was anointed with oil at his inauguration ceremony as a symbolic expression of God's favour. He thus was called the Lord's anointed. And see 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 1 and Psalm chapter 2nd Psalm verse 2. The term came to refer to a future deliverer of Israel only after the Babylonians overthrew the nation of Judea in 587 BCE and removed the Jewish king from the throne. From that time on, there was no anointed one, Messiah, to rule for several generations until the Hasmonean rulers starting in the mid-2nd century BCE. But some Jews record a tradition in which God had told David, his favourite king, that he would always have a descendant on the throne. See 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 14 to 16. This is probably the origin of the idea that there would be a future Messiah to fulfil God's promises. A future king like David who would rule the people of God once again as, sovereign, as a sovereign nation in the promised land. By the time of the New Testament, different Jews had different understandings of what this future ruler would be like. Some expected a warrior king like David, others a more supernatural cosmic judge of the earth, and still others, such as the community that produced the Dead Sea Scrolls, a priestly ruler who would provide the authoritative interpretations of God's law for his people. All of these figures are designated Messiah in the ancient Jewish sources. No source prior to the writing of the New Testament, however, is there any reference to a future Messiah who is to suffer and die for the sins of the people. Let me just repeat this because this is so important to understand this issue of the Jewish Messiah historically. In no source prior to the writing of the New Testament, however, is there any reference to a future Messiah who is to suffer and die for the sins of the people. This notion appears to be a Christian creation. So in other words, it's invented by the early church. It's not there in the Torah, in the, in the Old Testament, in Jewish belief or practice, anywhere in recorded history. It may represent, Bar Ehrman says, a combination of the belief in a future messianic deliverer with the notion that the one who is truly righteous suffers, a notion expressed in such biblical passages as Psalms 22 and 69 and Isaiah 53. And then Bar Ehrman says something that is really important to pay attention to. Surprisingly, for many Christian readers, the term Messiah never occurs in these passages. In other words, they're not about a Messiah, they're about other things. Uh, in the Psalms case, they're about the, the author himself, David. In uh, Isaiah 53, most historians consider this to be about uh, the exiled uh, remnant of Israel in Babylon, in the Babylonian exile. So we can see, I think, from this uh, passage that there was no single understanding of what a, a Jewish messiah would do, who would be uh, his role in the world. There were several different understandings of messiahs. 
Some expected a warrior king like David, others a, a supernatural cosmic judge of the earth, others like the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, a priestly ruler who would rule uh, God through God's law. But nowhere in the Jewish writings was it ever expected that the Messiah would, would suffer and die for the sins of the world, let alone be God. I mean, that's just unthinkable that God would become uh, a human being like that. So, uh, and the traditional passages that Christians refer to for Messianic prophecies, Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, are actually not about a Messiah at all. That's a later reading into the text, what scholars call eisegesis, or I see Jesus, as some wag once put it, uh, rather than exegesis, which is where you try and understand the author's original meaning in the text in its historical context. So I think that's a really helpful uh, discussion of the Jewish Messiah, um, and I hope you found that beneficial. Till next time.